All right, we have more changes unfolding in the U.S. economy and in the larger macro environment. Changes that have BlackRock, one of the world's largest institutional investors, making a sudden shift in strategy after their analysts flagged the same thing that Morgan Stanley just did with the upcoming revisions to GDP about to be rolled out. Well, BlackRock appears to be ready and waiting for this shoe to drop, which they explain with quite some detail in this client note they just sent out. Basically, what they're planning on doing, how they're planning on seizing new regime opportunities, they write. They also go into their projections for the U.S. economy, which happen to fall completely outside of popular opinion, the opposite of what most major investment banks are predicting. Well, we're going to cover exactly what they say. We'll look at this note that they just sent out and why what's playing out right now on a macro level financial instability, global volatility is not only what they prefer, but all part of their plan to rake in these big returns, written out by them in detail. But before we get started, press the like button and subscribe. It's all I ask for. It helps the channel out, and I appreciate your support. So, so revisions, folks. Economic data revision, something all investors and market observers should stay on top of as the official data that comes out of our government it's often flawed and inaccurate. Take the jobs data, for instance. The payroll sprint been revised down every single month this year. They release better than expected numbers for positive headlines, right? Then when the revisions come, we see just how bad things really are. And if you remember back to 07, the run-up to the great financial crisis, same thing happened. Everything looked all honky-dory till the revisions put a smack dab into recession at the end of that year. But 07 was an anomaly, right? Everyone says so. Not even close, folks. If you look even further back, the past 12 recessions starting after World War II had the average nominal GDP at 7% and real GDP at 3% in the month preceding the start of recession. That's how these things play out. They happen quickly and are revised down sharply. And get ready because this week in a few days on September 28th, is when the BEA releases the revisions on two key data points, GDP and GDI. We spoke about this last week, how the BEA does this once a year, and it's always important. Financial analysts always try to gauge the size of these revisions before they get released. But this year, right now, it's being watched very closely. It's why Morgan Stanley was warning their clients last week about the enormous spread that's opened in recent months between these two numbers. Two numbers, by the way, like we said a few videos ago, that are not supposed to diverge like this. They're supposed to mimic each other. If you have higher GDP, then we'll have higher GDI. GDI is gross domestic income, by the way. If one goes up, the other has to move up with it as goods and services aren't produced for free, right? Like you see on this chart, how closely they follow each other. Well, what do you notice is happening right now? A spread the size of Texas has been forming, which means one thing, a big, ugly, fat revision is coming. And what you should home in on here is the light teal bar in this chart showing just how large the spread really is. What do you notice? It's larger right now today than it was even back in 07, which was the same year, the same time of year as well, when we saw a big downward revision in GDP that led us right into the meltdown of 08. Now, we'll look at how this ties into BlackRock because it does. Let's just say that they're jumping on this downward GDP bandwagon. But first, to convey the full picture, take a look at this note that they sent out last week, written on September 18th headlined seizing new regime opportunities and before we look at this realize blackrock is always looking for opportunity arbitrages right or creative ways to invest and suck out the highest possible profit a lot of times that means taking advantage of creative financing opportunities putting their money to work by funding unorthodox projects or acting as a shadow bank a direct lender to large in need borrowers those could be third world countries, or more recently, we're seeing them doing the same thing in Ukraine, planning to lend money to the Ukrainian government for their country's rebuild efforts, all while raking in a big, fat, handsome annual yield, or ROI. Here's what they write. We see the new regime playing out in a high 
interest rate world. With stagnant activity and persistent inflation, we shift our tactical views to reflect this outlook. It may seem that the new regime offers very few return opportunities due to greater volatility. Yet we see the opposite. We see plenty that don't require a rosy view of the macro outlook. First, we harness mega forces, they write. Structural shifts we think can drive returns now and in the future. So they say we harness mega forces, structural shifts that can drive returns for us now and in the future. Well, the largest mega force that creates the most volatility is war. And oh, have they been positioned perfectly, ready to swoop in and take advantage and realize what that means, folks. If you didn't hear about this, by the way, on 60 Minutes a few days ago, exposing how we're not only funding their military, but the whole damn government, their civil services, like first responders, etc., even the country's rebuild efforts. And that's key because what that means is that there's this circular money funnel happening right now. U.S. taxpayer money sent to Ukraine, then Ukraine uses our money to repay BlackRock with a big fat VIG, by the way, tacked on for the banksters. Basically, we're subsidizing these mega yield loans from BlackRock and J.P. Morgan. Here's how BlackRock, BlackRock words this in their client note. They write this, we think private credit, which is what they're doing, by the way, that's what we're talking about here, private credit, could help fill a void left by banks pulling back on some lending and offer potentially attractive yields. We see the repricing in private credit as an opportunity to tap into our expectation that private credit can help fill this lending gap left by banks after the banking turmoil or earlier this year. Yields in direct lending, a subset of private credit have been rising and these higher yields better compensate investors for the risks that we see coming ahead just real quick something else that separates them blackrock from many of the major investment banking analysts is that they believe blackrock believes that we are that we are going to see higher for longer and i don't think that they buy what the fed's pushing necessarily but that but that they believe they see something that everyone else doesn't that the fed is about to get themselves stuck forced into keeping rates higher for longer much higher in fact we showed recently that Morgan Stanley, J.P. Morgan, and Goldman Sachs are all projecting that the Fed begins cutting rates next year, right? Well, not BlackRock. They see the Fed taking a very different path. Here's what they have to say. We see the new regime of greater volatility playing out. Higher interest rates, stagnating activity, and structural forces set to push inflation back up. Flip-flops in the market narrative make that clear. We have conviction on factors that will drive bond yields higher. Central banks holding policy tight as inflation pressures persist. Growing bond supply as government debt balloons and macro and geopolitical volatility. We expect that... that we expect that will spur investors to demand higher term premium or compensation for the risk of holding long term bonds, further pushing up yields, which we have been seeing during this entire year, especially in specific fixed asset classes like MBS, mortgage backed securities. By the way, that's the principal force that moves mortgage rates, right? The less demand there is from investors to buy our mortgages, the more the lender increases the rate and credit risk premium to make them more attractive to possible investors, leading to the rate that we all pay to increase. And right now, folks, there is so much extra supply in the market right now, not because there are more people buying houses, but instead because the Fed exited the market back in late 22, 2022, they stopped buying all of our mortgages and there's no one left who has anywhere near the bandwidth to fill the Fed's shoes. So the supply has been growing and growing to the point where they are so freaking cheap right now that hedge funds who don't normally focus on fixed assets are jumping into the mix. We've shown this in prior videos, how this went from being the most boring asset class to now the most interesting one. And BlackRock is betting on this to continue. But more specifically, they believe that a pivot is not in the cards for the Fed, saying inflation will be here for the long term, meaning the rest of the 2020s, and will force the Fed to keep this tighter policy in place for years. Here's what they say. The U.S. is navigating two large and unprecedented shocks. The first, a massive pandemic-induced shift in consumer spending that created a mismatch in what the economy was set up to produce in the first place and what people 
wanted to buy. The second, a worker shortage as baby boomers age into retirement. Our assessment is that we are set for full employment stagnation, something they say has gone under the radar of investment banks and of all the analysts. They say we see central banks being forced to keep policy tight to lean against these inflationary pressures. This is not a friendly backdrop for broad asset class returns. They say marking a break from the four decades of steady growth and inflation known as the great moderation. So that's their outlook for U.S. monetary policy. Now, how does this week's revisions tie into this? Well, in this note, they link you to an article that they wrote on their Investor Center website. Here's what it's titled, Stealth Stagnation, Why the U.S. Economy is Not as Robust as You Think. This was written on September 19th. The entire article, by the way, is all about Thursday's revisions, how they may be the start to a flow of negative data coming for the rest of this year and throughout 2024. Remember this chart I showed at the beginning of the video, how the spread between GDP and GDI has grown to its widest point basically ever. Well, BlackRock breaks this down and believes the same thing that Morgan Stanley does, that we're likely to see a big downward revision to GDP next week or this week. But they're much more bearish on what that means going forward. Here's what they go on to write. The prevailing narrative about the U.S. economy is that it's resilient. Despite rapid rate hikes, economic growth has held up and may even be accelerating. Yet, looking back, we see a different picture, stagnation that's gone largely unnoticed thanks to measurement issues and a misleading cyclical view of the labor market. On a broad measure of activity, the U.S. economy has basically flatlined since the end of 2021, growing less than 1% in total over that period, the weakest 18 months ever seen outside of a recession. And listen to this part. They write this. The gap between the measures tends to be wider in volatile times. It was last this big just before the recession, the global financial crisis of 2008. The Fed, re Fed research suggests that GDI is better at flagging when the economy is about to take a turn for the better or for the worse, which could speak in favor of putting even more weight on this. Additionally, research from the U.S. Bureau of Economic Analysis suggests the average of GDP and GDI is the most reliable guide to what's really going on, a view shared by the MBER committee that judges when the U.S. has officially gone into a recession. So this week, folks, we're going to see just how big the revision really is. Let me know in the comments how large you think it may be. Could it put GDP negative possibly? I don't know, but we'll find out in a few days. All right, if you enjoyed this video, got something out of it, press the like button. If you didn't, that's all right too. Either way, I appreciate you watching.